Hello everyone, this is Foon from HustleCastle.site. I hope you're all having nice summers, I certainly am. I just got back home to Italy yesterday and I'm leaving again in a few days to finish off the heat of the summer in the Alps. So very busy, but couldn't not make a video about this brand new event style we have, especially since it's definitely the most complicated event style yet, though that bar isn't really that high. Before I get started, remember to leave a comment with your game ID on this video or any of my videos to enter this week's diamond giveaway. I pick five winners every week randomly from any new comments across my whole YouTube channel. That's every week, even if I don't make a new video. The diamonds are sponsored by the official Hustle Castle community. So this new event style, a festival, in my opinion, what makes this event complicated is that you can't just grind the game, then come over to the event screen to collect your rewards. You need to actively be interacting with the event to earn the chests. First off, you need to be doing all your event quests so you can earn tools. That includes the ad every two hours. The ad trick I featured in past videos to watch all event ads in one sitting doesn't work. Also, my friend and clanmate Cluck says the more complicated trick of clearing the game cache also doesn't work this time. My trick works when it's the type of ad that automatically gives you the resources. When it's the type that you have to hit collect, it doesn't work, which is double annoying since it's so easy to watch the ad, get spit out on the main screen at the end, and then forget to collect the rewards and reset your timer. You only get tools from event quests or buying them with diamonds. So this will be the limiting factor for most players rather than the usual limit, time. Once you earn tools, you go to this screen to equip them. I can equip three because I bought the gold pass. Gold pass seemed worth it to me because of the extra event quests. This event, you can buy both silver and gold passes, but I think that is a bug and you shouldn't do that. So what do these tools do? You fight battles in the game. One of each of the equipped tools is used, which consumes it. And you get some seals for each tool used. Here, I'm attacking someone in my lighthouse with three tools equipped. I get back six little bundles of seals. Two for each of the tools equipped. And if you look closely, these are in fact the types of seals that you get in return for these types of tools. Note that the tools don't auto re-equip after they are consumed. You need to come back to the event screen and equip them again. Also note that losing a battle consumes the tools without any reward. So take them off if you are doing something where you will or might lose, like dropping trophies. Watching the ad to recover your apples and spells will not give your used tools back. You can also take them on or off between battles in the same arena tournament. So take them off when you're not sure if you'll win and put them back on for easier battles. But personally, that sounds too annoying, but it is an option if you want to use arena to convert tools to seals. Since tools are more limiting than time for me, I'm being more selective about which aspects of the game I play with my tools equipped. Or at least I am now. Yesterday I had no idea what I was doing and wasted plenty. Tomorrow, who knows. Here is a rough idea of what type of return you can get for your tools in different aspects of the game. With a special thanks to Kuzo Man from The Machines who helped me fill in the gaps. There are also three types of tools. Wands, orbs, and pots. Many people are reporting that they are swimming in one type and lacking the others. Most commonly, but not universally, wands. Since it's not universally true, for now I'm going to treat my wands with the same value as the others. In a few days, if the imbalance has gotten worse rather than better, I'll start to treat wands as less valuable so that I'm sure I use them all up before the event ends. Okay, strategy. I've taken this info and I'm now only equipping tools in dungeon and maybe cathedral. I might add invasion if I find myself struggling to use all my daily tools in just those game areas. Also, I'll be deploying in all wars and going on as many expeditions as I can because those give seals without consuming tools. Yes, wars cost apples that I could also use in cathedral, but if I'm not grinding arena, I'm going to have plenty of leftover apples for war. That seems like the best strategy with the info out there as of now. Just a disclaimer that it's the second day of a brand new event. Event, I'm jet lagged and there could be better strategy in the future as new info comes in. So you've earned seals. What now? The seals remind me of cards in a rune event. You collect the right combination of seals and then you can cast a spell, the equivalent of opening a collection in a rune event, both of which are essentially chests. Of course, chests have the usual low drop rates. The different spells all have different unique items that can potentially be inside. So you're going to want to start with the chests that have the items you want most. Also, I'd be opening these throughout the event rather than waiting until the end. This way, if you have enough tools, you can double up on the tools that give the seals you need most for those last missing items. Or at least if you're a more casual player, you'll want to do that. Heavier players will probably consume all their tools regardless. Everyone should pay attention once they've gotten the unique items from any particular type of spell not to open any more of that type. This is because, unlike a rune event with a million cards, there are only six seals that just get recombined into different spells. And one other tip I saw from pro legit gamer Mike, who has been seen in game and on Hustle Prime a bit recently, is if you plan on breaking items, don't multi-open chests. 
That's because the unique item could be in the first chest, and now you've lost nine opportunities to re-roll it. Kind of thing that's obvious once you hear it, but I definitely wouldn't have thought of it myself, so thank you, Mike. Now, the rewards themselves. Giving my two cents on these will have to wait for another video. I will say that I love these skins. Enchanted Forest is absolutely my aesthetic. But given the upper cap on grinding, I'm not going to be breaking anything until I see on Hustle Prime that people are getting them back in a reasonable amount of time. You do get items back after breaking them from the chests, aka spells. Leah from Event Horizon confirmed she broke the ring and got it back, and I consider her very reliable. I will say I definitely want the pistols. And I'm saying that without even having read them, because these are the first, and at least for another month, maybe longer, only event pistols in the game. So if one of those new pistol ancient sets ends up being meta, then these will be essentially the only option for a while. So let's wrap things up. I need to get some sleep before my jet lag kids wake me up for breakfast at 3am. Certainly there are a lot of strong feelings about this event, even though it's just started. For one thing, the complexity of needing this extra strategy. Some people like that. I think I do. But I also see how it's overwhelming, especially with new aspects of the game being added so fast. The fact that we have tools as a limit on grinding rather than time is very different. I'm intrigued by it, different is fun, but the criticism that many players will just buy tools with diamonds until time becomes the limit for them again, that's a very valid fear. 20 bucks for an event is already the highest I can possibly justify. If limiting tools results in everyone being more clever, great. If limiting them just means that only people who spend another 100 or so stay competitive, then frankly, I'd quit the game. It's hard to justify the time. I'm not going to spend more than 20 or so a month. And if I can't stay competitive at this level for that price, I think I'd lose interest, spending lots of time and always losing. Most likely, I think it'll be fine. Whales are going to whale, and most people will not increase their spending for the same reasons I won't. And the other big shakeup is this is a dungeon event. Most events favor those who can do really well in arena and stay in there all day. So this is different. I also don't think bots can dungeon since it requires two people. So yeah, being a dungeon event is going to shake things up. So yeah, find a partner you enjoy to go down with and get to it. Remember to leave a comment with your game ID and I'll see you all around.